Hey, good morning. Welcome back to our shop just outside Kennesaw here in North Georgia. Well, about a year ago, I bought a cherry drop leaf table, and I just put it in the storage unit, and I figured someday I'd get to it. Well, it's quieting down a little bit around here. It's uh, starting to creep into fall, and I figured now's as good a time as any to uh, pull it out and take a look at it. Well, I pulled it out this morning, and it turns out it was manufactured by Staten Furniture, S-T-A-T-T-O-N. And it's their old town line. It's a drop leaf dining room table with two leaves. It is solid cherry and it is gorgeous. The top needs to be refinished. There are some, re not repairs, there's some finish issues to the legs that need to get taken care of. And then it's going to be a beautiful piece for somebody. So we're going to get started on that right now. The first thing we're going to do, and the reason I'm not standing next to the table, is that when I uh, transported it, I noticed that one side of the table, it must have been sitting maybe against a damp uh, cellar wall because the adjustable, metal adjustable feet have rusted. So what I've done is I've sprayed some penetrating oil on there about a half an hour ago, and I'll bring you over. We'll pull those off, wire brush them, get them painted silver, and set them aside to dry. And then we'll bring the table inside, flip it up, get it masked off, and get started stripping it. So stick with us. It should be fun. And here are the legs that I'm talking about, these adjustable uh, metal foot things. And you can see, if you look in here, that that's just rusted shut, and the surface of this is rusted. But if you look down here on this side of the table, there's no rust at all. So somehow these got wet, probably sat uh, in the wet. And, and rusted. So we've sprayed these with some penetrating oil. I'm going to get a, uh, a pair of pliers and see if I can work this loose. You want to be careful. It's easy to break these and if they do break it's not the end of the world. We'll just take them off and put felt pads on the bottom of the legs. But I would like to leave these for originality. Okay, I've got a pair of pliers on this and I'm starting to uh, wiggle it and you can see that unfortunately the shaft is not turning. The only thing that's turning right now is the cap. So we're going to see if this perhaps unscrews. I'm thinking it's probably pressed in. So yeah, that's exactly what the situation is. I think what I'm going to try to do is get a pair of uh, needle nose vice grips on this shaft and see if I can wiggle it without destroying these threads. Obviously the next thing is heat, but if you can see we have a nylon bushing in here that will melt if I hit that with any kind of significant heat. So let's get a, grab a pair of uh, needle nose and see if we can uh, work this out without completely ruining the threads that are sticking out here. Well, this has been in here for some time. Uh, I got a small pair of vice grips on here, and as I started to uh, try to wiggle that shaft loose, this entire assembly is going to come out, which actually is not a bad bad thing, because with it out I can work on it on the bench. You can see how that's starting to pull away. So I'm going to get a little uh, pry bar in there and then work this with this uh, little uh, vice grip wrench and get that out of there and see if we can uh, separate these and get them cleaned up. Here's the assembly. And as you can see, what we need to get off is this part here. I'm getting as close as I can from here to here. should thread off this shaft. The problem is, how do I grab this shaft when the bottom part spins loose? And I can't get a good wrench in here to hold that. And plus, I'm afraid if I do, I'm going to strip the threads. Well, this end of the threads up here isn't really going to get used ever. For this adjustment and if I can hold this part of the thread here I may be able to get a wrench on this and start to turn this off because I've taken it out I was able to get some penetrating oil in through here and because I can turn this the other direction I can use a little bit of heat so I'm going to put this in the vise put a little bit of heat on this if it catches fire I don't get too concerned it's just the penetrating oil and see if I can spin this off
Yeah, it's starting to go. I think we got it. And now we got enough room to grab this up here. I'm tighten up my wrench. Pliers. Okay. Now let me get a pair of pliers on this and this should come off. If you guys had any idea what I'm going through to try to get this shot for you. I'm working from behind the camera. It's coming off. There we go. Got it apart. We can wire brush it, clean it, and uh, reinstall it. Well, bad news for all you fans of originality. I got the third one out and was doing the same technique to try to get it loose. The difference was this one was screwed all the way down, so I couldn't get a grip of the bolt on the pad side of the insert. But anyways, the bolt snapped right off. It had rusted and it snapped clean off. So now what we have is, is this assembly. If I could get this bolt out, we could save it. It would have just a little shorter throw than the other one. But I have no way now of steadying the threaded, what's left of the bolt or the threaded shaft with anything to try to spin this off. Uh, because as you know, the bolt is just pressed into this cap or this foot and it spins. So I'm pretty well dead in the water here. Well, because I've never been very good at leaving well enough alone, it irked me that uh, I was going to have to change the uh, entire working part of this table because I had broken off a bolt. So I started digging through my hoard and I found this T-nut. And as fate would have it, it threads on. I can't do it with one hand, but it will. It'll thread right on to the existing uh, bolt size that we're using here and believe it or not the diameter of the hole Matches what we have so all we're going to have to do is To uh, mount this in the leg now. I probably will take these prongs off Because I don't want to uh, I don't want to have to pound them all the way into that leg on the risk of splitting it I'll probably grind those most of those off and then we'll just put it on with some epoxy but if I can get what's left of this T-nut off of here and leave uh, enough thread on this bolt, we've got to save. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to try to uh, cut a slit in this with a, uh, a whiz wheel, a grinding wheel, and see if I can peel this off. So wish me luck. All right, about a frustrating hour has passed since you were last with me. This is what was the bolt that was sticking out of this cap, and then it was surrounded by that uh, rubber washer. That rubber washer crumbled away. 
what has killed me in this entire attempt to restore this is that this screw, which is really what it is, I guess it's a slot head bolt, has been turning in this cap and I just could not grab it to stop it. I even started to uh, chase some new threads on here with a quarter twenty um, die and I couldn't keep this from spinning and I was dead in the water so I decided I'm going to pop it right out of there. So what I did is I just broke all the uh, rubber screw which is what had frozen to the T-nut and gave us all this aggravation in the first place. This screw is also bent so it's done. So I found a quarter twenty bolt in my uh, in my supplies, in my hoard, and I threaded it into the drill and then spinning it on the drill I put it up against the grinder and took the, uh, the hex off of it. And now that will fit right in there. So what I'm going to do is epoxy that in there and then I'll put a rubber washer over top of it and that will make it so at least it looks like it belongs. No one's going to ever ever notice that it's, it's been uh, changed. But that's the only solution that uh, I could find. And of course, this quarter 20 bolt that I'm going to uh, epoxy in there uh, will thread into the T nut that we're going to replace it with. But you know, here, here is the, uh, here's what's left of pieces of the T nut that I was able to peel off. And we were having some success, but again, we always got to that point where there was just no way of keeping that bolt from spinning. And that's what killed us. So I'm going to clean up this uh, this cap, clean up the tip of this bolt, mix up some epoxy, uh, pour some epoxy in here, set this up, and let this let this uh, dry. And we're going to move on to uh, starting to work on some more of the uh, restoration of this table. But that's how we handle this uh, adjustable leg. I mixed up some five minute epoxy. I got the diameter of that bolt head where I wanted it, so it fed and fit right into that recess. And then I just filled that up with 5-minute epoxy. So when that sets up, that'll go right into that T-nut. And the bottom part, the pad, is going to match the rest of them. And that's all that mattered. So that was a pretty lengthy roundabout way of fixing this. But uh, it came out okay in the end. So we'll get ready to move on. Let's get the rust cleaned off of these. Here's the new leg that we made up, the epoxy set up, and then all we needed to do was get us a rubber washer there, and just messing around, looking around the shop, I found this one here, and it's not too far off, it'll be fine, so I think I'm probably just going to screw it on with that and, and uh, leave well enough alone. I'm going to put a little bit of grease on each of the threads of these legs so that they uh, go in and out easily and they don't get seized up any longer. And then when I put these T-nuts in, I'll just tap them in. I'll probably put just a drop of glue on them to hold them in there tight. So let me go get that done, then I'll show you what it looks like. There's two of them that we fixed. This is the this is the complete repair right here. And there's the other one. And I decided not to paint them. There's no need. Okay, disaster avoided. Let's move on. And I've got a little bit of automotive grease here. I just take a little piece of a a stick and I'm just kind of wiping a thin bit of grease on each one of these bolts so that they're well lubricated, they'll move easily. And they're not gonna they're not gonna lock up on us again. And after they've got their grease on them, carry them outside.
and there we go from rusted mess to uh, to fixed again so Yahoo for us we'll move on well finally here's the project it's a six foot drop leaf table with two one foot leaves so it'll open all the way to eight feet it's solid cherry as I said before and you can see you see that it has numerous finish issues lots of scratches we've got some clouding of a of a lacquer here we've got uh, scratches over there we've got finish missing so it, it does need a complete refinishing but this table is spectacularly beautiful in my opinion I mean, look at that holy cow and then there's the leaves over here and they're similarly as beautiful and similarly as damaged as the table is. As you can see there that this is this is why we're going to refinish this table. Okay, and if you look at the legs, these here are the gate legs on both sides and they swing in. And that's why those adjustable legs were so were so important. And I'm glad that we took the time to fix them correctly. But this is a very, very nice table. It's very, very high quality. And I'm glad I decided to refinish it instead of just patch it up and, and sell it on. So the next thing we'll be doing is stripping. Bring you back. It's time to start stripping the table. As you can see, we've got the legs wrapped up with painter's plastic. I didn't do anything with the uh, gate legs because they're far enough underneath. I'm not worried about them getting splashed. Anytime you're dealing with um, drop leaf tables or tables with leaves, you want to try to be careful that you don't let a uh, stripper run down in here. Uh, it just looks terrible. It just takes a little time to clean it up. So what I tend to do is keep it a little bit dry towards here and then come back and do these by hand a little bit more carefully. Uh, I've got both leaves stripped off. As you can see, there's a lot of color that was put into the cherry, uh, a reddish color. Uh, Probably a, a, a walnut color is my guess, a, a red walnut that's in there. And that's the base for the brown mahogany color that's on this table. So I think if I can get this uh, finish off, leave most of this color behind, we'll probably just have to use a little bit of toner to uh, recreate the, the color that was on this table. But uh, I will get set up and show you how I do it once again. Here's the tools I use. I've got methylene chloride stripper. I put it on with a chip brush. I take it off with this plastic thing. I got this at Walmart, by the way. It's great because it absolutely will not scratch the wood. You can dig in pretty deep with this and not scratch it. And then I put the, the goo in this little pot. And then it, uh, when it dries out, it can be thrown away. And then after I've gotten the finish off, I use uh, some lacquer thinner on a rag to get the last of the remnants off of the lacquer thinner. And then we wipe it down with some with some clear water to neutralize what's left of the stripper and leave it to dry. So let me get you set up. I'll let you uh, let you watch me do this. Just to keep the project manageable, I'm going to do one section at a time. So I'll start with this leaf, then I'll move into this section of the table, this section of the table, and then finally that one. And my personal preference is to use the liquid stripper rather than the paste. Uh, I've just had better results. It's a little bit more difficult to use because you have to keep it wet where the paste tends to keep the stripper in contact with the wood and slows the evaporation. But I did talk to a rep from one of the companies and he said that the, the paste is just basically cornstarch. They put cornstarch in, uh, in the mix to make it thick and and I've found, in my experience, that it, it, it's not as aggressive a stripper as the liquid. So I use the liquid. But you have to keep it wet. And you can see it's starting to, uh, it's starting to take the finish up already. Look right there, and you can see that's coming up. You can see it's starting to bubble up all over the place. As long as you keep it wet, let it do the work, it'll take the finish right up. And the finish comes right up. There'll be places where the finish will be a little bit more stubborn. It'll take a second coat, but in general, this will take it right up. 
You can see the pile of goo we're getting there and it's coming right off. Okay, we've got uh, most of the finishes stripped off, so what I'm doing now is just putting a second coat where it's where it's stubborn. Most often you'll find that along the edges. That's really because you don't scrape uh, there as well as you do in the field. I just take this rag and I dip a dip it in some stripper. Careful not to make a big mess of it. And I can bring it back and I start to wipe down any place where you see streaks or residual stripper, or I'm sorry, residual lacquer finish that's laying on the laying on the table. Now at this stage, remember, you're, you're, you're removing lacquer, and lacquer does not dissolve in mineral spirits. Lacquer thinner is the correct solvent to use at this stage of the game. Uh, mineral spirits is, is an oil solvent. It's not a lacquer solvent. And any of this big stuff like you see me struggling with right now, that should have come up with a scraper. You don't need that kind of volume of goop on your rag, but that's the way it came out. All right, it's about been about five minutes, and that leaf is stripped off. I'm going to continue to wipe that down, then I have to work on the edges. And what I'll do on the edges is just apply a stripper with a brush very carefully, holding a rag underneath it to keep it from dripping underneath or dripping on the floor. And then uh, take my scraper and scrape it off, and then I'll come back with my rag. And then finally, probably some 4 out steel wool, and if that's the case, I'll show you. Okay, we've got the stripper portion of, the, of this section of the top done. I'm going to move on to the edges, which can be a little bit tricky. And what I've found works real well is to take a rag and hold it underneath, and just apply your stripper lightly with your with your brush and it'll take that finish off. You don't want the big drips running underneath the underside of the table. I mean even though the underside of the table is not finished it is colored and it, it should at least be sealed and you don't want those those drips under there. They just look terrible. And it's the same deal. You want to keep it wet and you want to let the stripper do the work. And if you go a little bit early on your clean off, you're breaking the, the surface of the old stripper and it'll let your next coat of stripper get in there and do a, do a good job for you. So you don't have to always wait until it's exactly cooked off. You can, you can go ahead a little bit early if, if you're impatient like me. And now I've got you know a lot of broken finish here, places where the finish is completely removed. So it's going to be a whole lot easier for this coat of stripper to do what it's got to do. Now there's a little controversy on using steel wool when you're trying to preserve the color. But what I've found is that if you're just judicious with its use, you don't go crazy and you're not sawing with it. It'll help you take your finish off and leave the color behind just fine. So there you go, that, that edge is already taken care of. Okay, that's how I do it. I got the rest of the table to do, so let me get to work and I'll bring you back. And here it is all stripped off, lacquer rinsed and water washed. We'll leave it overnight, let it dry off. We'll get back on this tomorrow.